Well, my guest today is Sir John Elliot Gardner. 70 in April, I can't believe this. Do you believe it? No. <laughs> and with an activity level, I'm happy to tell you that a man of third his age would, be, uh, would feel privileged to, uh, uh, to be able to carry through. Let's have a word or two about your birthday year. First of all, a bark marathon, 1st of April. Absolutely. Um, it's, a, it's a wonderful and slightly zany idea, but Bach is the only composer one could really do this with. He is just so many-sided. He ticks all the boxes. I mean, he, he appeals to those who, who love clavier, piano, organ mm. music, all the wonderful instrumental things, the solo stuff for cello and violin. But the vocal music, which is my great love, of course. I mean, the cantatas are just amazing. And we're starting with uh, Zingit dem Herrn, the best of his motets, which is probably the most effusive and ebullient of all of his motets. And then we've got his Easter Day cantata, um, Chris Lagen Todesbanden, which is a strange piece because it describes the sort of harrowing of hell, Christ descending mm. into hell and then doing battle with the, with the devil and then coming out victorious. And it's such a good narrative. And it's not only uh, you and no, no. of course it's the Monteverdi Choir and English Brock Soloists. You've got Joanna McGregor, Joanna Alvin McGregor's Gerhardt, yes. And Victoria Mulliver. Victoria Mulliver. Yes. And, and I mean, they're all wonderful artists. And, and to have Joanna playing the, the uh, Goldberg Variations is really special. Nine hours. For it's as nine little hours. as 20 pounds at the Royal Albert it's Hall. It's good value. <laughs> um, and uh, there's a wonderful panel of, of people, not the usual kind of boring musicologists and, um, you know, classic FM yeah. presenters. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, you know, a philosopher, a very interesting, very sharp lady who is a psychiatrist and who's done quite a lot of work yes. into, um, you know, Bach's character um, and various in, extremely interesting sort of uh, neuroscientists, mathematicians, right across the board who'll be talking about his music and seeing, explaining what really appeals to them as mm. lay musicians but as specialists in their own field. Now you know my sadness, I shall not be in London. Where will I be? The county of my birth, Dorset. In Dorset. Which what? is of course, were you born in Dorset? I were you was. really inhabited? Well, there we are. We're Dorset. Dorset. Dorset born, Dorset bred. Strong in the arm and weak in the head. Strong Except in the we arm. hope that isn't entirely true of <laughs> you and me. But, <laughs> but you were I, born the other end of the county, weren't you? Where, Wareham. In Wareham, yeah. I was yes. born in near Shaftesbury. Yeah. Never mind. We are united Absolutely. In, this, uh, yeah. in this endeavour. Now, other things for your, uh, for your birthday. Deutsche Grammophon, a 30 CD box collection. So I believe. Although since you've made 250, they're not exactly um, well, spoiled for choice. It's very, it's very nice that they're doing it because I haven't worked for DG for... 12, 13 years now, so it's a, it's, it's, a, it's a nice gesture on their part. But funny enough, the closing of that door opened another rather marvellous one. It did. Tell us about Soli Deo Gloria, or I'll tell them about it, but you tell them about it. Well, it, it happened really by fluke more than anything else. It was just that we did this huge project in 2000, which DG were initially going to record, and then they decided they couldn't. And it left us rather high and dry, and they, they recorded uh, four of them. and. We did all these concerts with the cantatas in succession on the appropriate day. And we were fortunate to have them recorded by an expert team. Yes. But we never thought twice about issuing them commercially. We thought they would just be given to archives and schools and conservatories. And then Isabella, my wife and I, we sat down and listened to them a couple of years later and thought, you know, they're not bad, they're actually mm. Amazing. Well, it's better than not bad when we think how many gramophone awards have they won? Oh, quite a few. Yes, quite exactly. A few. I have them all, so uh, I don't just speak. And from do you know what's so the nice? Word. What's so nice, David, is that you get to choose the covers and the layout and the feel of the yes. CDs. And I wrote the, the sleeve notes. And they've made a huge impact as, as, as visual have. documents. Exactly. And I'm not paid, by the way, to advertise this product. But the thing about them is they're beautiful, good documentation, wonderful, as you say, sleeves. And it does reflect what was really a year's pilgrimage around Europe and also to New York. Yeah, we ended in New York with uh, Mayor Rudy Giuliani sitting in the audience in a baseball yes. cap. <laughs> <laughs> but that didn't put you off? No, no, because he said he was brought up a good Catholic, and, but he always preferred... Protestant, Protestant music and music. Bach, and, and, and so he came incognito and listened to the Bach. And the last four of these are due out shortly. Uh, the Ascension Cantatas, mm. which, as 
spectacular, actually, but some of his best music of all. And the only reason we, um, we weren't able to record them in 2000 was because we encountered a priestess from hell mm. <laughs> who forbade them. Really? Yes, she wouldn't have it recorded in her church, the Cathedral of Salisbury. Um, so we've made up for it since and recorded them. And uh, it's the only place that everybody, everyone, everyone else was so cooperative. But anyway. Anyway, Soli Deo Gloria, uh, the Bach Cantatas, if you really want to know about Bach, that's a, as good a place. Well, I was going to say a starting point. It's a good ending point as well. At least I find it so. Moving on to other projects, you see, uh, what... I, in my tribute to you, because I've got to get this in, Classic FM, you are 70 on the 20th of April, though I don't actually believe it, but anyway, that's what they say. The 21st of April, we have two hours, me choosing my favourite recordings of yours, and I don't know whether you'll agree with the choice. I'm going to start off with another Soli Deo Gloria recording of concerts, a concert that you gave in Carnegie Hall in New York with Beethoven's Fifth and Seventh Symphony, which I just think... You know, if you want to have music that really has it all in terms of it grandeur does. and inspiration, and you've moved on since you recorded them commercially, so yes. it's great to have that. And it, we were on a high, we really were, everybody, because we'd done a tour through Europe and then arrive in Carnegie Hall where they're not used to hearing um, Beethoven played in that sort no, of exactly. way. And the audience was in, helped us, they, they really lifted us. It was a tremendous sort of... Um, effusion in, in the hall. Now look, let's just finally turn because obviously we are a station that plays um, uh, recordings of music. Uh, it's been a, th a genuine thrill for me as someone who I think I've probably got every recording that actually you've ever issued commercially to work out what I could best put into two hours and I'm pleased that um, uh, I've not tried your patience too much with the ones that I've chosen. No, I've also no. chosen Massenet's Orchestral Suites. Oh, how nice. Which um, I think you recorded in Monte rather Carlo. a last minute. Yes, in Monte Carlo. Absolutely. I was called up on the Friday and had to record on the Sunday. So I really was flying by the seat of my pants and I hadn't ever heard of these pieces. And um, it was lovely because they are, they are approachable and they're not sort of difficult to get into, but they're just so winning and they've got so much kind of natural French elegance to them. And, Lots of charm. And some opera composers just about get by as orchestrators, and others are rather brilliant at it. Massenet was rather brilliant he at it. He was very good. Yes. And the orchestral suites show that. And the only um, um, uh, uh, other thing, of course, an absolute favourite of mine, Percy Granger, which you conduct something called the English Country Gardener Orchestra. <laughs> yeah, that's a bit, a bit <laughs> of a, a lark. But you actually met him. I met him um, when I was seven years old. He was a great friend of my great uncle, Balfour Gardner, who was a composer, mm. and they both have been students together. And Balfour was a very correct English gentleman wearing a three-piece um, tweed suit. And Granger was dressed from top to bottom in bath towels <laughs> and wearing raffia shoes and cavorted around and was very genial. I remember him being absolutely delightful and very eccentric. And I just adore his music. It's it's original, it's maverick, but it's got something quite unique. Now, we've celebrated your 70th birthday. I want you to look ahead. What are we, you and I going to talk about on your 80th? Oh, God knows. But there will be some Janacek. There will Janacek. be some more Monteverdi. Um, there will be some more Bach, inevitably. Um, there will be some unknown composers, today unknown composers, who I think are just waiting. Like? Johann Christoph Bach, yes. wonderful composer called Georg Österreich, another one called Schürmann, another Both. fantastic one uh, called Johann Theile, uh, Weckmann, Bruns. They're all these guys around Buxtehude and, and Bach's generation, a little bit earlier, who just are marvellous. They've got so much quality in them. Well, many happy returns for the Thank 20th, you. and thanks for all you do. And all of us at Classic FM salute you. Thank you very much, David. Thank you.